Oh, everybody. Well, I believe that one thing we will we stay. We'll be steady. Everybody, I hope all is well with you all. I hope you're all doing well. Praise God. I hope you're all doing well. I hope all is well with you all. I just wanted to, hey Latoya, how are you? I just wanted to come in to quickly say, how are you, my dear? So before I go to bed, hey Queen Lee Olukoya, how are you? Welcome. <sighs> Well, this is live from Saudi Arabia. Ramona, you trailing me all over the place. <laughs> oh, Ramona, you're bad. Well, I am out here on a contract. Thank you. I'm out here on a contract. Hey, Daryl, welcome, Dixon. For those who are new, <laughs> hey, Ramona Jones, Pina Opara, welcome. Those who are new to my broadcast, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Dr. Princess Fumi Hancock. So people know me as the Global Vision Midwife. I'm a writer. I've written 20 books. And my 21st is Get Ready to Come Out. And of course, I make a movie. I'm also a film director. And so praise God for that. And I've won some African Oscars behind my belt. So thank you, Jesus, for that. And so now, yeah, global. So now I am on a path of expanding my empire and also looking in places like the UAE and also Saudi Arabia where I am. So I've been in Saudi Arabia for over a month now. And I'm still going to be here for a little bit longer. Um, I can't tell. Um, there are times I wake up and I say, okay, today I'm going, I'm going back home. And other times I say, oh, it's not that bad. And then I stay, right? So I go like this, I go like this. Now here's the thing, because you have to get used to, uh, the way of doing, I mean, just life here, because life here is completely, I'm telling you, it's completely different. And it's funny because I see a lot of people in America, they have this, this, this fantasy about, oh, I want to go to Dubai. I want to go to UAE. I want to go to Saudi. I want to go to all these places. And the thing is, right, you have to be really, really ready. And being over one month, I can say, categorically say, that many of us are so spoiled in America that some of us won't make it out here. <laughs> right, some of us won't even make it out here. And so going global is not just about that word global, but it's also about your mindset, right? And going global really starts with your mindset until you have a mindset of, of being global. And how do you... How do you have a mindset of being global? Oh, really, Ramona? Go out and come back. Go out and come back. How do you have a mindset of being global? In your own community right now, right? How global are you in your community? In your community right now, how, how global are you? How global are you in your community? How global are you in your community right now? What kind of, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Queen Lee. Thank you, right? What kind, right? What, what, what kind of people are in your life right now in your community? Who is in your life right now in your community? In your community right now, which community are you impacting? Are you just in your own bedroom, right? Are you just in your own office? Who are you impacting in your neighborhood? Because going global starts from home. You just don't go global from your bedroom, global. No, you, it starts from where you are. 
right? What community are you impacting even where you are right now? In the U.S., there are so many immigrant communities. There are other communities in your neighborhood around you. So who are you impacting right now? Because until you begin to understand who you're impacting, right? Going global is just a word. It's just a word, global, right? And so when I hear people say they want to go global, I say to them, why? Why do you want to go global? Do you just want to go global because you're here? Everybody is talking about going global. Or do you know that you should be going global? Hey, Mervyn, or you should be going global. Right? That's right. It starts from becoming a community leader. Who are you in your community? Who are you in your community? Right? What difference are you making in your sphere of influence? What difference are you making? What difference are you making with your gifting? Right? What difference are you making with your gifting? If you are a writer, what difference is your writing making? If you are a speaker, what difference is your speaking making? If you are a trainer, what difference is that making? If you are a business consultant, what difference are you making with that gifting? And until you begin to see, even in your own zip code, and you begin to see how much of an impact you're making, is going to be literally difficult. To make ends meet, it's going to be literally difficult to even want to consider going global because here's the thing if you can tolerate global communities around you within your community, then you're not going to be able to tolerate what you see out there. So, going global starts with the mind today, this morning, right? This morning, if you have not gotten a chance. To watch what I did this broadcast, my life hack broadcast this morning. I talked about a film, a movie that I watched. And in and, and that movie, right? In that movie, I talked about it was the, the, the main character was played by Denzel Washington. And this is about one guy called Carter who was arrested at the age of 30 or 20. Right, he was a boxer. He was riding up the wave right now, but he was arrested for killing some people. That I mean, he was just an injustice done, and he stayed in prison for over twenty years. Right, but what I learned from watching that movie last night, it was just powerful. He said something. He said, "Hate put me here." But love is going to bust me out. And if you did not get a chance to, to watch my broadcast this morning, I urge you to go back and watch that because it was so powerful. And I began to figure out where, what that statement, how can I use it for my own life? So wherever you are in life right now, right? Yeah, Denzel played it. Denzel played it and it was a true story well, about hurricane. Whatever it is, wherever, whatever level that you're in right now tonight, I want you to consider this, that he put you there, but it's the love of what you do. Let me say that again. The love of what you do is going to bust you out of that complacency. The love of who you are, the love of what God has called you, the love of what you do is what's going to bust you out. Now, the second statement that he made that was so powerful, he said, when he writes, he was talking about his writing, and he says, his writing helps him to transcend beyond the prison walls. Oh, my God, that's so powerful. That is writing. So what is it that is in your life that can help you to transcend beyond the prison of the mindset? What is it that you have? What gifting, right? What gifting? What vision, what purpose? Hey, Kara, what vision, what that would have to tell you? Hey, Edith, right? My love for writing, my love for seeing other people prosper, my love for helping other people get clarity in their vision 
has helped me to transcend beyond where I am today. And because of that, I'm in Saudi Arabia today because I know that my gifting prepared me for today. Right, Ramona? My gifting prepared me for where I am today. If I had not learned, taking the time to master my gifting, I don't think I'll be in Saudi Arabia today. I don't think so. I don't think I'll be in Saudi Arabia, right? But because of mastering that gifting, and as you master the gifting, the people that are supposed to help you to your next level, we see you where you're mastering and you're manifesting because as you master it, you will automatically begin to manifest in different ways, right? I remember one of the books that I wrote, right? One of the books, which one is that again? Beyond Idol Worship. I will never forget it. Beyond I wrote. The title of the book is Beyond Idol Worship. I wrote that in 1996. And I remember, I think it was in 2000 or something, a, a young lady reached out to me and wrote me a letter from New Jersey. And she talked to me about how that book impacted her life. She said to me, she said she was in a lesbian relationship and she'd been in that les lesbian relationship for three or four years or something. And she found out that she was miserable, but she didn't know what to do. And she said one day she was sleeping and she just heard a voice say, go to a store, a bookstore down the street. She said she got up, she and her lesbian lover got up. And she told the girl, I need to go to that bookstore. And it was a Christian bookstore. She said she walked into that bookstore. She said as she walked into that bookstore and she looked up, my book was being displayed. She said my book was the first one that her face went to. She said she remember going to that shelf, picking up that book. Please listen to that story. Picking up that book. She said she stood there and she opened because she didn't know what she was doing at the store. She just knew she needed to be at the store. She opened, she said she stood there and she, she can't remember if she was there for five minutes, 10 minutes, and she read about three or four pages of my book. And when she read it, she, bought, she paid for it and she went back home. And she said, as she was reading it, she said to me, she said, no, she was in a relationship for 10 years, I'm sorry, 10.